Ian Steffen from the University of Missouri St. Louis and I'm affiliated with the Optimal Aging Center. The purpose of today's little video is to review session one of the Coping with the Blues approach which is a eight-week behavioral activation program using the materials from the Treating Later Life Depression workbook from Oxford University Press. So in our video today, um, we're going to outline the components of session number one. I'll be walking through the specific learn and practice forms, making a couple of comments on implementing them. I'll be reminding some, uh, uh, some basic tips for managing session pacing and therapy alliance, and also providing some troubleshooting and reminders of where to find things in the Later Life Depression Clinician Guide. So as we get started, I just want to remind all of us that uh, oh, you don't have to feel completely confident with the material before you actually just get started using these things with clients. What I find for myself as a therapist, as well as those that I'm involved in um, training and consulting with, is that we all feel a little awkward and unsure when we're doing something for the first time. And that it typically takes all of us um, uh, using materials all the way through with two to three clients before we're feeling confident and very comfortable with, with the materials. So don't wait until you're confident to get started in using them just get started with your individual clients. We've really worked hard in the Later Life Depression Workbook for both the learn and the practice forms to have all of the essential information right there in front of you, that you have your copy, the client has a copy, so you don't have to be memorizing either content or discussion questions. We've really built that into the materials to make this as easy and comfortable for clinicians as, as possible. So again, um, the best way for overcoming perfectionism is just to roll up our sleeves and get started and, and just allow things to feel a little tentative and, and not completely comfortable for the first couple of folks with whom you use this approach with. So session number one is held after a resident has been screened for depression, meets that program criteria that we've set for moderate depressive symptoms, which is a PHQ-9 score between 10 and 19, and that they've indicated that they have some interest in meeting um, with a member of the Laguna Woods Village clinical team for eight visits. Um, we've organized this by eight visits, really high functioning, low depressed clients could get away with six sessions. And I'll sort of um, point out that when we get to how sessions four and five are repeated and sessions six and seven are repeated with the exact same content. And again, a critical piece of all of this is that this is not just them um, receiving suggestions or getting information. This is about skill development, and that's a key part of um, what we want to be emphasizing. And so we're really expecting residents to be open to the idea of, of both learning and practicing new skills in between their meetings with you. Um, some of the tips that we have in the materials that we pulled together for you as a clinician is to comment in your work with residents that this is probably going to feel different than past th therapy experiences that they've had. We suggest that uh, each resident's provided with a simple folder and that you're providing the stapled packet for session one. And throughout this entire program, we're recommending that you only provide one session's worth at a time so that they're not just paging ahead and saying, oh, that's all right, I'll just look over it. Because again, this isn't just about reading something or looking over material. This is about developing new healthy habits. Um, for all of these sessions, we want to remind you that it's important to have the time while you're together for the session to write something down on the relevant practice forms to get started and be clear that they're going to be continuing to work on these between meetings and that when you get together the next time, one of the first things that the two of you are going to do are to sit down and look at, at what they've written down in the practice forms to really set that expectation that both they're working on this between, that you're getting started now, so they have an example, that they're to work on it between your meetings. And one of the first things that you, the two of you are going to do when you get back together is to look at what they've written down. And again, my recommendations for those um, pages and forms that are marked as bonus is that they're great for really high functioning clients who are catching on fast, who are really eager and energetic. Um, for the majority of residents, you're providing those bonus pages, but you're really sort of setting the expectation, setting really low expectations. 
these are extra bonus pages. You're welcome to look at them if you like, but you don't have to, and, and you don't have to do anything with them if you don't want to. Here's a picture of the ideal seating. And I know that since you're doing um, visits in the in your residents' homes, that you don't have a lot of control over um, where you're going to be working, that every apartment, every residence is going to uh, be different. I will make um, the comment that tables and chairs are better than sitting on a couch or an easy chair and using a clipboard or writing on top of a book. Um, it does a couple of things. It kind of sets a working tone to the session as opposed to a more friendly visit conversational tone. And you'll see in the chair placement, this picture, that sitting in this diagonal kitty corner way um, provides um, a, a variety of, of nice things in your work together. It allows you to turn and make eye contact and to really address the person individually, but it also allows the two of you to look down on the um, table surface at the materials and to be able to, to have the resident share what they've been writing or what the two of you are, are working on together in session um, and to be able to look at the same material at the same time. Um, in session number one, uh, you see here the listing of the specific learn and practice forms, as well as the session one goals. Uh, the goal of this first session is to begin the dialogue on what, um, what signs of depression are specifically for them, uh, to allow the resident to share a little bit about their past experiences with depression and what they may have learned in terms of previous coping efforts that were and weren't successful, and then to um, begin that focus on values and strengths that we're gonna carry throughout the behavioral activation program. And certainly um, that working on these materials together are a really powerful way to start forming that collaborative working relationship together. And then you see the two bonus pages, um, Start 11 Learn, Celebrating Diversity, Start 12. Uh, practice Ways to Encourage Myself are great for high-functioning clients, um, but that aren't essential for someone who's um, either very depressed or um, just moving uh, at a slower rate. Here's um, that uh, Start 7 Learn, where uh, you're beginning to look at this together and have them check off and begin to discuss the um, signs of depression that they recognize in themselves. Then you're starting this work together in session where they're beginning to write down um, their responses. So this isn't just something that you're having them um, do on their own between session, in session, you're then uh, looking together at start one practice and you're asking them in their own handwriting, as opposed to your handwriting, for them to indicate the ones that bother them the most, that they think they need help with, um, uh, to share a little bit about their past experiences of depression and write some notes down there. Um, and what has worked and not worked in the past in terms of coping efforts, as well as who might also be available uh, to help provide support. So you're starting to work on this in session. You want something written down in each of these areas. And then you're encouraging them to relook at this a couple of times over between um, uh, this first session and when you meet again for session two to see if they want to, if, if other ideas have come to them, if they want to add something else. Uh, then and a very important part of session um, number one is to talk, is to introduce the idea of values um, and to uh, talk through these three questions on the bottom of Start 10 Learn uh, for them identifying some of their important values and who they share, who in their life they share these with and uh, particular strengths uh, that they've used in past stressful times. And then again, you're in session looking at start five practice together and having them begin to fill out a little bit on each of these lines and then encouraging them between the two sessions to relook at and to write some more down, to add on to uh, after the session, other things that come to their mind. And then here you see the two um, bonus pages on celebrating diversity, which allows for a dialogue and a conversation surrounding the identities that are most important to them in their life. Um, and that, uh, again, introduces the concept of chosen family. 
and then this the additional bonus page on the skill of self-encouragement, which is really helpful, but might be a little much for some clients. Reminder that the therapeutic relationship is important for all of us. We're not just technicians. We really want this program and approach uh, to uh, in every single session to demonstrate our respect for uh, the resident, for the for their life experiences, for the wisdom that they bring. Um, and you're uh, using a really warm, conveying um, atmosphere in the way in which uh, we're checking in, uh, uh, asking them for feedback as well as in our tones. Um, so here's a couple of those within session tips that will be the same for every session. We're encouraging you to start the time off um, without. So what we don't want you to be saying is, hi, how are you? How have you been? Uh, instead, we wanted to have a warm greeting. Mary, it's so good to see you today. I'm glad that we're here together. Let's get started. And what we're going to do to get started is we're going to review how you're doing. And then we're going to make a short list of topics for our time today. Uh, and that reviewing how you're doing may be specifically referring to their past PHQ-9 and saying, you know, when we met the last time, we went through this. So we're going to start with this program and begin to talk about um, your experiences of your depression in a little bit more detail. Uh, so some of the recommendations we have for enhancing the therapeutic relationship is clarifying how the resident wishes to be addressed. There are cultural differences in formality or informality that we want to specifically note. Um, in some cultures, uh, a resident who has a formal title themselves, who is a pastor or a doctor or an elder, may uh, prefer to be referred to um, in that way or as Mr. as Mrs. So you want to ask about that. And then they may also um, want to refer to you by something other than your first name. And so you want to be thinking about that. We want to be jotting down and remembering the key details of individual lives and really sort of communicating that we know that this program is taking some work on their part and we appreciate the effort that they're making and that you're also spending some time preparing for the work that you do together. Uh, you know, a reminder that's important is, is tips for managing storytelling. We're going to recommend that in um, early sessions and session one that you're establishing a signal together for interrupting and redirecting. So here's the suggested language that we have um, within session number one or session two. You know, Mary, at some time when, when in our time together, I'm really likely going to need to stop and interrupt you to make sure that I understand what's most important to you before you continue. When I need to stop you for a bit, to make sure that I really understand, how would you like me to do that? I can say your name, Mary, and put my hand up or put my index finger up or make a T with my hands. What feels good to you? So you want to establish that signal and then you want to use it. And after you've established that signal, you want to make sure that you use it either by the end of that same session or in the next session even if it's not a critical point for interruption, because you just want to get the two of you used to the fact that you're likely going to be doing that over your time together. There are some additional wording and suggestions for managing session pacing. Um, here are some uh, suggested language, and we have additional recommendations on this in the clinician guide in pages 79 to 81. And uh, just a reminder that uh, we're just reinforcing over and over again that this isn't about just providing you information or you making suggestions to them. This is a program to help them develop some new healthy habits. And we know that habit formation and habit change takes time and effort and repetition. So this is really about applying skills in daily life and to practicing between session. And we spend some time talking about this in the clinician guide, pages 71 and 72. And so uh, the uh, reminders that we're making are to write down those home practice assignments, complete a form 
a portion of each form in every session. You want to really sort of check in and ask, you know, how does this feel? You know, from zero to 100 percent, how likely do you think you are to be able to relook at this form at least once or twice between now and when we next meet and see if you want to write in some additional information here? Um, if less than 90% confident, you say, oh, you know, this sounds like this is feeling a little bit um, much. What do we need to do to, to make this feel more feasible for you? Let's do some, let's do some problem solving together. Um, so uh, session pacing is so critical because a lot's going on in these sessions, right? We're uh, communicating uh, that we value them and that we value the time together. Uh, we've got a lot of work to get done and we want to save time at the end to make sure that we're clarifying questions about the home practice and that we have an opportunity to ask for feedback at the end you know as we're wrapping up today mary can you give me a sense you know how did today go i'm wondering if there's anything that i said or didn't say that just felt off that was you know troubling to you in any way and then we want to stay very hopeful and optimistic for their future. And we provide some suggestions in pages 82 and 83 in the clinician guide about this. So for additional training on beginning treatment, we um, address this in session one of that uh, culturally responsive CBT overview uh, series that we offered at the E4 Center, and I've provided the link for there. Uh, we have those three tip sheets from the Optimal Aging Center that provide some general guidance um, for uh, working with older adults in, in cognitive behavioral therapy. And uh, we're done with our overview for session one. I hope you found this helpful, and I'm looking forward to working together over time.